A few years ago I've made an introductory video on developing a photo from start to finish using Darktable and Filmic RGB. With Sigmoid maturing and gaining popularity, I figured it might be a good time to revisit this topic and show you how to develop a photo using Darktable and Sigmoid. So what's the difference between Sigmoid and Filmic RGB? From my point of view, Sigmoid is simplified, more intuitive and faster way of forming a satisfactory picture. Filmic RGB, however, offers more granular, finer controls and better repair tools. You can do everything that Sigmoid does with Filmic RGB and a couple of other modules, but it will likely take more time and more steps to do so. With that out of the way, let's begin. To better illustrate the whole process, I've made a fresh install of Darktable 461. The first thing that we need to do, as is tradition, is to mess around with the settings. Click on the cog icon, go to processing, and change the auto apply pixel workflow defaults to scene referred sigmoid. This will change the default modules that are presented to you when you load an image. We can close this window now. Since Darktable is so versatile, and sometimes a little bit confusing, there's a couple of ways of importing photos into the light table section. The one I prefer and use the most is simply dragging and dropping files into the window. This will create a collection that will have the folder's name that the photo is in. A different method is to expand the import section and click add to library. Click the plus sign to add a place if it's not already in the list and select the folder that holds your photos. Now you can choose whether to include non-raw files, preview them and select what you want to import. Select the file and click Add to Library. I have already touched on what modules are in the first video, but good information is always worth repeating. In Darktable, modules are steps that help you develop an image. These modules are sorted into tabs to help you mentally categorize them but personally, I don't find the tabs useful. So let's switch to show only active modules. This will display a list of modules that are already activated and are necessary to preview the raw file you have loaded. Some modules are mandatory, such as raw black white point and cannot be turned off. Others are on by default, but can be disabled. Lastly, you can duplicate, reset and save a preset of a module. And, of course, since this is Darktable, you can move the module by holding Ctrl Shift and dragging. The order is very important, since Darktable processes the modules from the bottom up. For now, let's keep the module order as is. One more useful thing to know. You can show all available modules by simply clicking on the tab. Clicking on it again will show only currently active or enabled modules or you can simply search for a module that you already know the name of. Right, let's get developing. Now that we know what modules are, let's take a second to familiarize ourselves with the basics. Let's make sure we can only see active modules and let's see what we currently have enabled. Raw black white point is best to keep at default. White balance module is necessary for color calibration module and is best to keep on camera reference. We will tweak the temperature of the image later in the pipeline using color calibration module. Highlight reconstruction is active by default and that is fine. In paint or pose does a really good job dealing with overblown areas. Next up, demosaic. Another mandatory module that turns your sensor readouts into pixels. I leave it at default. Orientation and exposure are both self-explanatory. Input color profile is also mandatory. This basically takes your camera's unique primaries and transforms them into something we are all familiar with, such as Rec 2020 primaries. Now, color calibration is where we deal with what people call white balance, temperature, tint, you name it. Color Balance RGB is responsible for dealing with color. We can adjust the colorfulness of the picture with high granularity using this module. Our main and most important module here is the Sigmoid module, a point where our capture gets formed into a picture. 
it's a point in the pipeline that we do all our work around. You will hear people talk about pre-image formation and post-image formation. This means that some processes must happen before the image is formed, in this case using sigmoid, and some processes must happen after the image is formed. So if we take the color balance RGB module, for example, that is currently processed pre-formation and drag and drop it above sigmoid, it will be processed post-formation. This will become important once you're fully familiar with the image making pipeline. Let's reset the module order for now using the reset module order button and let's develop a photo. In the spirit of the first tutorial, we'll once again be looking at the back of this out of focus person. Let's start from the bottom up and let's try to improve on this image. I'll minimize the photo overview section for now. This can be easily cycled by clicking the down arrow multiple times. First of all, I kind of want to tidy up the composition a little bit. The crop tool is currently not in our list of active modules. So we can either display all modules and look through the list or simply type crop in the search bar. Expand the module and once you touch a setting, it will automatically activate. Set aspect ratio to original. I'll simply crop this rock off and move it slightly downwards. If I collapse the module, it will exit the tool and allow us to continue our work. Let's get back to our active modules and let's tweak exposure a little bit, since I feel the image is a little dark. There we go, much nicer. Let's then move to color calibration. I can sort of sense that the balance of this image is a little cool, a little too blue. Since this is an outside shot, I'll set the illuminant to D. Now I can either use a slider to neutralize the image, or I can use the picker to select a neutral area in the image. Click on the picker and draw a square around a neutral spot in your image. Since I have no such neutral tones, I'll have to eyeball with the slider. For fine control, you can always right click the slider and move your mouse to adjust the value in fine increments. Ok, I think we got rid of the overall blueness of the picture. We can now move to sigmoid, which is already active and already doing its magic. I'll adjust the contrast a little bit to make the picture more lively. We can always go back and reduce the exposure if I think it's a bit too much. I'd also like to make the picture a bit more colorful. This can easily be done with color balance RGB module. Adjusting the global vibrance usually does a really good job. Like so. Now, I'm rather happy with the picture, but I would like to give it my personal touch. For that, I'm going to use the RGB primaries module. I'd like to rotate the blue slightly towards cyan. We can do that with ease using the blue hue slider. I can also reduce the overall impact of the blues in the image by reducing the blue purity. Lastly, I will add the frame. I think this helps picturify the image, as I call it, and help people look at it as a picture. Notice that the frame will be added after the sigmoid module or post image formation, since it's not actually a part of the image, just something we add on top. That's it. We are done. Let's move back to light table so we can export this image. Now to save a JPEG of this image, simply expand the export section, select the folder you want the files to be exported, choose your file format, Enable high quality resampling. Pick your profile, which will usually be sRGB, and hit export. And that's pretty much it. You have now developed an image from start to finish in Darktable using Sigmoid. Now you can start experimenting and optimizing your workflow to make the whole process faster and more streamlined. And don't forget to subscribe for more picture stuff. And if you have a second, check out other videos I have on this topic. That's it for today. 
I'll see you next time. Bye.